So I recently installed the Govi outdoor permanent lights on my house, which I absolutely love, and then followed up that video with another one going over how you can cut, extend, splice, and waterproof them. But like always, curiosity got the best of me, and I wanted to find out if they're in any way compatible with WLED, and if so, how you would go about getting everything set up. I'm first going to take the power supply that the lights came with and connect it to the Govi controller just like you normally would be doing if you're setting these up. Then, about halfway between the controller and where we connected this to the power, I'll go ahead and make the cut. Now make sure to hold on to the controller because it still has value, which I'll get into later on. From here, I'll be stripping the outer sheath as far back as I can. This is going to expose the red voltage and white negative wires underneath. Then, go ahead and strip those two wires back, each about 10 millimeters. Next, I need to find the beginning side of the strip of the outdoor lights. The easiest way for me to figure this out was to find the end, which has this style screw cap like you're seeing here. Since I know this is the end, I can then locate the other side, which is the beginning. From here, I can cut off the connector piece, separate the three wires, and then strip them back. Moving on, I recently found these thicker 20 gauge jumper wires on Amazon that have worked out great for a lot of previous projects. I'll need two of these that have one male and one female side. And as far as controlling the lights, I already have the awesome and free WLED program installed on this ESP32 board. Now I won't go into those easy steps since I already made a video going over that simple process that you can watch if interested. So in this step, all I'm going to be doing is plugging in the female end of one jumper wire into the GND pin on the module. Next, I'll take the other jumper wire and again put the female end into the D2 pin of the ESP board. Now that things are prepped, I have to get everything connected, and no surprise here, I'll be using some Wago clips. I'll need one 3 slot connector and two 2 slot pieces. I'll first take the main power supply and insert the white negative wire into the 3 piece Wago clip. I'll then do the same for the red voltage line, but this one will go into one of our 2 slot pieces. Next, let's turn our attention to the LED light. Now the biggest thing to remember is that when I'm holding the lights flat like this, Govi has the top wire as the positive, the middle as the data, and the bottom is our ground. I'm going to first take that bottom ground wire and insert it into one of the two remaining openings on our three slot Wego piece. Then I'll insert the top voltage line into the two slot Wego piece that has our other positive wire from the main power supply. Moving on to the controller, I'm going to take the male end of the jumper wire that's plugged into the GND pin on the ESP32 board and install that into the last remaining opening of our three section Wego clip. And last but not least, all that's left to do is to connect the male end of the jumper wire coming from our D2 data pin on the module to the middle data wire from the LED strip using a separate two slot Wego. Now we do need to power the ESP32, and for this I'm going to be using an old phone plug and a micro USB cable that I had laying around. This can get plugged right into the module like I'm doing here. And at least for me, I would probably just shove all this into a small junction box, and since these, for the most part, will be installed under an overhang, I personally would not be concerned about rain or snow since it would be protected. Now before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14 day trial, and during the setup process, one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. Their all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start your own free 14-day trial, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you all so much, and now back to the video. So, the moment of truth has finally arrived. Once everything's plugged in, go ahead and pull up the WLED app. And as you can see, I do have a lot of controllers around the house running WLED, but the one connected to these lights is right here. Once you're on the main screen, click configure near the top right and then into LED preferences. I do have the brightness limiter turned off, which you can certainly play around with, but other than that, scroll down, make sure you have WS281X selected from the drop down, make sure you indicate what your data output is, and since we connected ours to the D2 pin, I'll have two in this field. And finally, for your length, you can manually enter how many lights are connected, which currently there are 12 in this setup. Then, near the top, hit save and your light should automatically come on. And just like that, these lights are connected and 100% being controlled with WLED, and all the animations and effects are working absolutely flawlessly. 
Now I was curious and wanted to make sure that these results would be the same if I plugged in more lights, so I added about 3 or 4 more sections to find out. And in case you're wondering why these additional segments look a little strange, these were the lights that I did all my cutting, extending, and waterproofing tests on so they still have all the splices and heat shrink tubing on from that. But once they're connected, go back into LED preferences and update the number of lights we now have, which is 48, hit save, and they should all be lit up. I'll run through some more animations, but again, everything's working beautifully. So if you're already familiar with WLED, you know how awesome the program is, but if this is your first time hearing about it, I will leave a link in the description to a video I did recently going over some of my favorite animations, effects, and settings. Now above and beyond just the WLED aspect, it's also fun to think how I might be able to incorporate LED FX into this setup, which is able to run Sound React software to your lights in real time. I did make a couple videos on this free program that you can check out if you really wanted to get your brain thinking about all the fun things you might be able to do. Now you may be wondering, does this mean you hate Govi software? And the answer is not at all. I just really like having options. Govi has done an incredible job with their app and features as well as creating an ecosystem where everything can talk and sync together. So in case you want to have the option to switch back and forth, I'll now quickly go over how to get the same lights back up and running using the Govi controller. First, you can remove the ESP32 and the jumper wires from the Wago clip so that all you're left with are the two Wago clips connected to the red and white wires from the power supply. Next, take the Govi controller that I told you to hang on to at the beginning of the video and strip back the outer sheath. Then, strip back the red and white wires underneath and connect those to the Wago clips making sure that the red goes with the red and the white to white. Moving on, basically we just need to get the screw on connector piece reattached and you very well could use the one that we cut off in the beginning of the video. Just separate the wires, strip them back, and use some Wago clips to connect everything back together again, making sure all the wires are lined up correctly. Then we can plug the beginning of the light strip into the end section of the controller, plug in the power, and everything is now back up and running using the Govi software. So that about does it for this video. I was super happy at how easy it was and how great it worked to modify these Govi outdoor permanent lights to work with WLED. From here on out, I'll go ahead and reconnect the ESP32 and run through some more of the WLED animations so you can see a little bit more of them in action. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.